How to Lose a Billion Dollars, 10 Billionaires Who Lost It All. Former billionaires Bertie Madoff, Alan Stanford, and Ike Ballista have all done time in prison for financial crimes, while others have lost their wealth due to other factors. In today's video, we feature 10 renowned billionaires who declared bankruptcy or went bankrupt, as well as the bizarre stories of how they lost it all or how their businesses failed. These billionaires, who were formerly among the world's wealthiest people, lost billions of dollars and went bankrupt or declared bankruptcy. Losing billions is everything but boring. Each story comes with a unique lesson, twist, and drama. So get your favorite drink, sit tight, and enjoy the ride. Remember to go clickety click on the like button and do a tap dance on the notification bell so that you get to know immediately when we release videos on the channel. Multi-million dollar yachts, mega mansions for homes, private jets, fleets of cars, and more. These men and women had it all and were worth billions. But a sequence of terrible judgment, bad luck, and other things caused them to lose everything. And these 0.001% became the 99% in spectacular fashion. Some of the world's most famous millionaires have filed bankruptcy at some point in their careers, either personally or through their businesses. Other affluent billionaires have claimed to be bankrupt. Many circumstances contributed to these wealthy people losing everything, including economic downturns, poor investments, and big fraud cases that landed them in hot water, to name a few. Some of these billionaires have returned to fame and are now just as wealthy as they previously were. Others, on the other hand, were unable to reclaim much, if any, of their former wealth. We've ranked their stories from least to most brutal. Here are 10 famous billionaires who have gone broke or declared bankruptcy, plus the wild stories of their fall from the top. Patricia Kluge Patricia Kluge was the embodiment of high society before losing everything in the 2008 property market crash. Kluge, a former heiress and model, met her second husband, John W. Kluge, while visiting New York City. John W. Kluge, formerly worth $5 billion and regarded as Forbes' richest man in the United States, married Patricia in 1981. John Kluge was 35 years senior and the chairman of Metro Media, which he sold to the media mogul Robert Murdoch for $4 billion, transforming it into the monstrosity that is the Fox TV network. When John and Patricia divorced after nine years of marriage, he was one of America's wealthiest men. The $1 billion she received in the divorce deal was the biggest ever at the time. But, like with other affluent divorcees such as Jocelyn Wildstein, whose case we'll look at later in this video, Patricia quickly discovered the hard way that it wouldn't last forever. Patricia Kluge obtained a sizable settlement of a million dollars per year, plus the couple's vast Amber Marl estate. Located in the Virginian countryside not far from Thomas Jefferson's Monticello property, Amber Marl would lead to the rise and sharp decline of Patricia Kluge's wealth. Kluge established the Kluge Estate Winery and Vineyard on 960 acres of land in Amber Marl with her third husband, William Bill Moses, with the intention of turning her property into a profitable business. She enjoyed a brief period of success, with the estate's wine appearing on the tables of socialites and notable individuals across the country. Kluge's wines were also served during the wedding of Chelsea Clinton. Kluge, on the other hand, lost it all following a series of bad investments and pouring money into her estate just before the property market crashed. Donald Trump eventually purchased the Abel Morrow Winery in 2011 for a fraction of what it was worth after being seized by the Bank of America. Kluge attempted to avoid bankruptcy by auctioning off all of her expensive jewels and other prices of fortune. But it wasn't enough, and she had to file for Chapter 7 bankruptcy in June of 2011. Yodelford Goodmanson Yodelford Goodmanson, an Icelandic tycoon, made his fortune in the brewing industry. He was also the owner of West Ham United Football Club in the United Kingdom. However, the guy who was formerly Iceland's second richest man declared bankruptcy in 2009. His bankruptcy petition included a massive $759 million debt. It was the largest bankruptcy filing in Icelandic history at the time. Gudmundsson's fall from grace was mostly due to the Icelandic economy's collapse during the crisis. Gudmundsson and his son, Bjorgafer Thor Gudmundsson, were both big owners in the failed Icelandic bank, Landsbanki, in October of 2008. When Gudmundsson declared his bankruptcy in December of that year, Forbes revisited his net worth from $1.2 billion to zero. His son dropped down the Forbes list and eventually dropped out entirely. However, Thor Gudmundsson has now regained a large portion of his fortune in what Forbes describes as a crazy comeback. It's unclear whether his father had similar luck in subsequent years. Vijay Malia Vijay Malia, a former billionaire, was a notable liquor mogul noted for his extravagant partying and high-flying lifestyle. He was also the owner of the now-defunct Indian carrier Kingfisher Airlines. Beginning in 2012, it was found that Malia had racked up multiple bank loans while attempting to keep his aviation company solvent. 
When he failed to make payments, the Indian banks from which he had borrowed money started a manhunt for him. He fled from India to the UK using a diplomatic passport he obtained as a member of India's upper house of parliament. Malia has failed to return to India even as the government and banks seek to extradite him in order to pursue legal action. The businessman is accused of bank fraud and money laundering allegations totaling to an estimated 90 billion rupees or 1.3 billion US dollars according to Business Standard after a bankruptcy petition was utilized to reclaim 1.145 billion pounds in outstanding funds, Malia's net worth was significantly reduced. The remaining payments, however, have yet to be reimbursed. Donald Trump Donald Trump is no stranger to financial difficulties. Though Trump has never declared bankruptcy, the businessman turned politician has declared bankruptcy on several of his various businesses. Trump declared bankruptcy in 1991 after defaulting on interest payments to bondholders as his finances went to a tailspin, according to the Washington Post, Robert O'Hara. Two other Trump casinos, as well as the Plaza Hotel in New York, have declared bankruptcy. PolitiFact also identifies two previously undiscovered bankruptcies filed by Trump, one in 2004 for Trump Hotels and Casino Resorts, which is now $1.8 billion in debt, and another for 2009 for Trump Entertainment Resorts. Trump, on the other hand, does not appear to be troubled by his long history of bankruptcies. Trump was challenged during a Republican presidential debate in 2016 if he could be trusted to manage the country's businesses following his streak of bankruptcies. This was his response. Quote, I have used the laws of this country just like the greatest people that you read about every day in my business have used the laws of this country. The chapter laws to do a great job for my company, for myself, for my employees, for my family, etc. Jocelyn Wildstein According to Money, Jocelyn Wildstein is now worth substantially less than previously. In May of 2018, the former life of late millionaire art dealer Alec Wildstein, a socialite, filed for federal Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. According to the New York Post, she stated in the application that her monthly salary was $0 and that she survived on $900 in social security payments and help from friends and relatives. She claimed that a defective divorce settlement is to blame for many of her financial difficulties. Wildstein told the New York Post that despite spending the majority of the $2.5 billion she earned during the divorce, she was promised considerably more. In the settlement, she received two paintings, one by Diego Balaquiz, turned out to be counterfeit, and another by Paul Cezanne that sold for a fraction of its original value. The former billionaire told the New York Post in May of 2018 that she's looking for a top lawyer to acquire all she believes she is, quote, supposed to have for her lifetime. Sean Quinn Sean Quinn has achieved considerable success in his investments in industries such as plastic, glass, and hotels. He has also earned a 25% share in an Anglo-Irish bank, which had to be bailed up by taxpayers during the 2008 financial crisis. The bank was taken over by the government, resulting in a series of legal issues between the Quinn family and the bank. Quinn, once considered Ireland's richest man, lost the most of his $2.8 billion fortune. At one point, the Irish Bank Resolution Corp, which took over Anglo-Irish Bank, claimed Quinn owed the bank more than 2 billion euros. He was soon charged with contempt of court for seeking to conceal his property assets from the bank in order to avoid repaying his obligations. According to the Financial Times, Quinn declared bankruptcy in November of 2011 after claiming his assets were less than 50,000 pounds. In September of 2019, Kevin Looney, a close colleague of Sean Quinn and a director of Quinn Industrial Holdings, was kidnapped and abused, demonstrating that there's still a lot of animosity towards Quinn and his company. Alan Stanford Alan Stanford, the leader of the second largest investor fraud case in US history, is infamous for his unscrupulous business operations and for duping over 18,000 customers out of their money. Unlike Madoff's victims, many of Stanford's victims have yet to get restitution for the crimes committed against them. Stanford's misdeeds began following the failure of a Texas fitness club that he owned, and then he resorted to offshore banking and began executing his plan. Many of Stanford's victims, according to CNBC, were seniors who were promised secure investments, making this case of investor fraud even more heinous. On February 17, 2009, the Securities and Exchange Commissions raided Stanford Financial Group's Houston headquarters and charged the billionaire and his accomplices with running, as CNBC puts it, a massive ongoing fraud. Stanford was accused of defrauding investors in order to fund his luxurious lifestyle, according to The Probe. The Stanford fraud, the second largest Ponzi scheme in U.S. history, resulted in $7 billion in losses for investors. Stanford was convicted on 13 felony counts in 2012 and is currently serving a 110-year term in a Florida high-security prison, according to CNBC. However, the effects of his misdeeds continue to afflict his victims, who lost millions of dollars during the scheme's operation. His net worth has now been listed at $0. Elizabeth Holmes Elizabeth Holmes was once hailed as a rising star of Silicon Valley. Her blood testing firm, Theranos, 
grabbed notice as an interesting investment potential in the early 2000s. The startup promises to transform how individuals are tested and treated for numerous ailments and illnesses. By the end of 2004, the company had raised approximately $6 million from private investors, some of whom had personal ties to homes. However, as interest in Theranos grew, so did the questions about the company's processes and laws. After trying to persuade Lieutenant Colonel David Shoemaker to sign off on a military test run in 2012, Holmes expressed concerns with the Food and Drug Administration. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, then inspected the business. Quote, the device was still under development, they were told. Tensions were rising at Theranos, and despite one FDA approval, news outlets were questioning its legitimacy. Theranos had lost two key relationships with Safeway and Walgreens by November of 2015. CMS decided in 2016 that Theranos' test could endanger patient safety. After many lawsuits, layoffs, and a federal charge that Holmes committed massive fraud, Theranos filed for bankruptcy in September of 2018. Holmes then relinquished management of Theranos and paid a $500,000 fine to settle SEC accusations. The Department of Justice went on to charge Holmes and her ex-partner, Sunny Balwani, with wire fraud. According to Forbes, Holmes' personal net worth is now $0. Mike Batista Ike Batista once appeared to be the world's richest man. Those dreams were dashed, however, when his once thriving oil company, OGX, declared bankruptcy in 2013. According to the BBC, the self-made billionaire was widely recognized for his luxurious lifestyle and became an inspiration to younger Brazilian generations. Batista was projected to be worth $30 billion in 2012, ranking him the ninth in the world. However, as Batista's oil company failed to satisfy demands and Brazil's economy began to deteriorate, he was forced to declare bankruptcy in 2013. In January of 2017, as authorities began investigating Brazil's top corporations and why they had dropped so rapidly, they charged Batista with money laundering and corruption. He was convicted of 30 years in jail in July of 2018 for bribing former Rio de Janeiro governor Sergei Cabral. On May 24, 2020, it was announced that Batista had reached an agreement with Brazilian authorities that he would serve four years in prison and pay $160 million in restitution and cooperate with prosecutors. According to BN Americas, the deal must still be validated by a court and the fine money will be utilized to combat the coronavirus. Bernard Bernie Madoff Bernie Madoff is largely regarded as the mastermind behind the greatest Ponzi scheme in US history. Madoff, a financial industry expert, remained unnoticed for decades before his untimely demise in December of 2008. Prior to the controversy, he and his wife had estimated a personal net worth of $823 million to $826 million. Now, he's bankrupt and serving a life sentence. Madoff appeared trustworthy. He founded his Wall Street firm, Bernard L. Madoff Investment Securities, LLC, in 1960, and previously served as a chairman of the NASDAQ. His massive Ponzi scheme began to unravel after investors demanded $7 billion in payouts. According to a previous Business Insider report, Madoff had only $200 million to $300 million remaining to offer at the time. According to CNN Business, Madoff defrauded his list of investors out of a stunning $65 billion. At the height of the scheme, Madoff received about $20 billion from his different investors. The Department of Justice charged him with 11 counts of fraud, money laundering, perjury, and theft. Bernie Madoff was sentenced to 150 years in federal prison. In a plea bargain with prosecutors, Madoff agreed to give up most of his assets before going to prison. Ruth Madoff received $2.5 million in exchange for Madoff giving up the majority of his wealth, an estimated $80 million in mansions, jewelry, vehicles, and art. She now lives in Old Greenwich, Connecticut. On April 14, 2021, Madoff died of natural causes at the age of 82 in Federal Medical Center Butner, a federal prison for inmates with special health needs near Butner, North Carolina. The cause of death was listed as hypertension, atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease, and chronic kidney disease. With another recession looming on the horizon, the fear of losing money is quite palpable. And billionaire or not, losing money can be a huge blow since money is the lifeblood of business and one tool that we use to create happiness. However, losing money is not the end of the world, as quite a few of these examples show us. As Bernard Meltzer puts it, quote, the real measure of your wealth is how much you'll be worth if you lost all your money. Beyond money, two common denominators among the billionaires that manage to get their fortune back are character and courage. As the poet Wolfgang von Goethe puts it, quote, money lost, something lost. Honor lost, much lost. Courage lost, everything lost. Better you were never born. If you've stayed up until this point, then you're the real MVP. Go ahead and drop a quote in the comments that keeps you courageous in the face of challenges. And remember to subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Also, be sure to hit the notification bell if you haven't already so you can stay alerted whenever we upload a new video to the channel. Thank you for your time, and until next time, cheers to winning big.